Hello everyone, my name is Mondishta Sharkar and I am a second year law student of Adams University School of Law and Justice. So we all know that there are times when people make up stuff like just random stuff which has no existence in the real life. This is the same scenario when it comes to news. People make up stuff and then manipulate it in a very skillful manner to make it look like credible journalistic reports, which makes it easier for the large audience to believe willingly in this fiction. And as a result, word spreads rapidly. This is what we call fake news and which when circulated spreads misinformation and often at times disinformation. Therefore, in today's session, we will indulge in a discussion on this very topic and try to get to know a little more about it in a better way. And to help us with that, we have with us retired judge, Mr. Nikhi Shonjan Shanyal. So Mr. Shanyal has a MABTLLB degree from Calcutta. He also has an economics honors and political science degree from Calcutta University. His last judicial post was an additional district judge at the Asansol Court. He was also the president at the District uh, Consumers Disputes Redressal Forum, North 24 Parganas at Barasa. So now let us welcome Mr. Sanyal. Hello, sir. Welcome to our session. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, sir, the first thing that I want to begin the session with is by getting to know a bit about you. So, were you the first person from your family to step into this profession? I am the first person of the family who has come to the judicial profession. And sir, what had inspired you or encouraged you to take up law as a profession? Because of the fact that this profession is an independent one and there is no interference from any quarter and I can judge everything independently. So, all these attracted me to join this service or to take up this law as a profession. So, sir, can you now tell us a bit about your personal journey as a judge? Hmm. I have got various experiences as a judge in different capacities. But it is very difficult to remember all these at a time at this stage. But I have gathered best experience. Okay, sir, no problem. Sir, sir can you please tell us now why is judiciary important? Judiciary is important to protect democracy and the rights and uh, of the people at large. Without judiciary, the people's right cannot be properly protected. And this also protects people or the rights of the people being infringed by some political inference, interference. Sir, in the recent times, our nation, the democracy in our nation, has faced quite a lot of challenges. What do you have to say about it? Yes, democracy has faced various challenges at this stage. And there is judiciary which protects people from infringement of their rights and for the judiciary stands for protection of the rights of the people in this democratic country. So there is, such imp there is a great importance of judiciary in this aspect. Okay, sir. So moving on to the next question that I have for you is that, do you think that the media in our nation is really free? And if so, why? I do not think so. And so, like, why do you think so that it, it, it is not really free? Who is not free? 
to the media in our nation so you just said that it is not really free why do you think that it is not free no i do not think that judiciary is not free at all it has got still independence till now i don't know what will happen in future but up till now i can say boldly that judiciary is still independent okay sir so like uh, let, let us move on to the next question so sir like uh, it is often said that the uh, media in india is free so do you think that uh, is it really free or like no still there or uh, is it not free at all not in all cases media is not free in all cases and there is some restrictions imposed upon the media from the government and from other quarters so the media cannot properly function so next moving on to the questions for today's topic so let us start with a very simple question sir what is misinformation and disinformation and how are they different from each other there is a difference between misinformation and disinformation though i have not come across disinformation in english vocabulary but nowadays this is in uh, it is found in various quarters it is heard in various from various quarters that is misinformation is the information in my opinion which is misleading which mislead people to do some things which is not proper and disinformation is formed by somebody or is derived from the opinion of others and this information may not have any basis this is formed only on the basis of the opinions uh, given by different persons and as such this disinformation also in a word is like misinformation in other words it is also a misinformation it is also misleads people in some way or other this is in my opinion is the difference it is a subtle difference that is mis uh, mis uh, information and disinformation okay so so what do you think are the ways that one can identify or at least try to identify a piece of information as misinformation or disinformation it is very difficult to identify misinformation and disinformation separately but uh, from the opinions of different peoples and from media information or print media or uh, or or see electronic media after gathering information from all these quarters we form proper information okay sir so the next question is what do you think is the relationship between misinformation disinformation and democracy mm. democracy is the voice of the people and democracy is the correct is uh, based on correct opinion or correct information should be rather democracy should be based on proper information or correct information and not on misleading information misleading information also mislead democracy to function properly so i find the mainly misinformation is misleading information disinformation is the information which is not properly collected or derived from the opinion of the people at a large and the democracy is based on the proper and correct information otherwise democracy cannot function properly okay sir. 
So, sir, do you think that money and power play any role in the creation and dissemination of misinformation and disinformation? Sometimes, of course, this money plays an important part, particularly at the time of election. We find sometimes that by spreading money to the people at large, some information or misleading information is spread. So, in that view of the matter, I find that money in many places, particularly at the time of election, plays a very important part in disseminating false or misleading information. Okay. So, sir, what interventions do you think are the most effective in combating disinformation, including but not limited to pre preventive measures, regulatory responses, and citizen engagement? Some interventions from the uh, are also required to uh, to avoid this false or misleading information. And I think that some law is required to be framed by the government to avoid this misinformation or false information which lead to various hate speeches. Recently, I find that various hate speeches are being spread. So, to avoid these hate speeches which are spread, the intervention of the government is required and government has to frame laws on, in this regard, strict laws in this regard. And we see regarding head speech, we find the Honorable Supreme Court is in session of this matter. I think some remedies will be suggested by the Honorable Court. Okay, so moving on to the next question. So do you think that disinformation has its effects on political opinion and behavior? Or, and how can these effects be measured? And at what point do they threaten democratic governance? This misinformation, or you meant to say disinformation, all these, play an important part in affecting the proper functioning of democratic government, certainly. And in that view of the matter, the government has to play an important part in regulating all this misleading misinformation and disinformation by enacting proper laws on this point, which I have already stated. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, next question will be What factors heighten the risk of disinformation resulting in? hate speech, harassment, or violence? Or, and also, how do narratives target particular groups to lead to their silence? The hate, the misinformation or disinformation leading to hate speech, I've already stated, play a very important role in disturbing the proper function of democratic government. So, some effective measures and drastic steps are to be taken to stop all these, otherwise the democracy will not be successful. Yes, sir. Uh, I came across a statement recently that stated that isolation, uh, like isolating human interactions is the best way to stop the spread of misinformation and the information. So what do you think about this statement? Isolation. We mean isolation plays an important part in stopping all this. Yes, sir. Like I came across such a statement. No, no. I do not think so. Okay, sir. So uh, we all know that during the first lockdown, this information as well as this information was spread on a large scale. So, sir, what do you think was the particular reason for such spread? And, like, why was it spread at such a large scale during the lockdown? During the lockdown, at the outbreak of pandemic, there were 
there are spread of misinformation in a large scale. It is correct. And the it does the weak points of the people at large. And by hearing all these misinformations or misleading information, the people were afraid of they am afraid of being affected by this pandemic. Though all these informations were not at all correct, there were some mis misleading informations and they were spread only by thinking of the weakness of the people at large at that time. Okay, sir. So the next question is, what do you think is the role of traditional media in amplifying this information? There is a great role of media in identifying this, all this misinformation or misleading information if the media can function properly and independently without any fear or favor. And sir, like how have the changes in the uh, traditional media markets affected the spread of misinformation and disinformation? They played an important part in spreading misinformation and disinformation. I, in my opinion, this is correct. Okay, sir. So, sir, as far as I know, there aren't any specified laws which help in the regulation of the spread of misinformation and disinformation. So, sir, do you feel that the absence of such laws on this topic make it more easy to spread misinformation and disinformation? Yes, I think so. So, sir, we have already come to our last question of the session. So, sir, please could you tell us some measures or steps that can be taken to stop or at least try to stop the spread of misinformation and disinformation? Some measures have recently been taken to stop all these, particularly the informations or misinformation which are leading to hate speech, etc., which create a very important role in stopping the proper functioning of democracy. But still, some more laws, some more effective laws or effective steps are required to be taken to stop all this by the government. Okay, sir, that was the end of the session. It was indeed a very informative session, sir. Thank you so yes. much for your valuable time. It was such a yes. delight to talk to you. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thanks a lot. You also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.